You started writing in the late 80s, early 90s, um, and you continued obviously today. And the big thing, big media change, big internet, and basically, the, I guess the angle I want to talk to you about it was was writing television in the internet age. And um, and you're the showrunner, you're the head writer, and to my knowledge, you're probably the most um, interactive and accessible uh, executive producer in television. And I guess, um, was this something that when you began Battlestar, was this something that you intended? I, I pretty much wanted to do it because I had gotten used to interacting on the internet at Star Trek. When I, uh, when I was at Star Trek, the inter internet was, you know, coming alive, you know, it was really blossoming. We had PCs to begin with and they weren't even networked together. You had to walk discs downstairs mm -hmm. to print them someplace else. I mean, it was very sort of arcane, or not arcane, that's the wrong word, but it was very old school way of computing. And then as I stayed on the show, over time, suddenly there was a, we got modems and suddenly there was this thing called email and then there was this internet and then there were these fan sites they started to glom onto. And there was a, a on AOL, they developed a, there was a folder called Ask Ron Moore within one of their, their AOL website. And I would go into this, this uh, place and answer questions. And people would just like post questions in the Ask Ron Moore folder. And I would try each week to go in and answer any question that they put to me and sort of talk with the fans and argue with the fans and get involved in their you know, various pedantic arguments mm -hmm. about this or that point. And I was used to it. It was a way of interacting with the audience because you know, in television, I don't get the experience of, of, uh, of walking into the back of the theater like, say, a feature writer or a playwright would and watching the audience respond to my work. You know, I don't get that any th that contact with my audience. It's I watch the show in isolation by myself at home with my wife, maybe with a small group of friends. Today I watched it with a class, but those are really rare exceptions. So the internet became this method of sort of hearing response back, of getting you know feedback from the audience in a in a much faster way than than mail than sna snail mail would give it to you. So at Star Trek, I got into this habit of interacting with fans and answering their questions and being on their websites and doing live chats. And I just kept doing that. And then I sort of thought, well, if I become a showrunner someday, I'm going to really do this. And I wanted, I had this vision of doing a show that was very transparent, where you could go onto the show's website and look at dailies and see deleted scenes and do just all kinds of wacky stuff behind the scenes. And we've started to move closer, Galactica, closer to that direction. And I just find it enjoyable. I mean, I like it. I like doing the podcasts for the episodes. Uh, the blog is a little bit more work because it's more writing, and my job is so much writing every day that I'm tired, and it's like, uh, I'll go write something on the blog, and it's like, oh, God. And so I've kind of, the blog is really intermittent mm -hmm. and isn't updated that frequently. But, mm -hmm. you know, I enjoy the podcast, and I enjoy making the shows, being as interactive with the audience as I can. Yeah, with these <coughs> podcasts, I mean, you've pretty much taken the idea of the director's commentary on the DVD, and, but you've made it much more instant. Um, I guess, how does that, when you have this instant feedback from yourself, how does that, how does that uh, take the show in a different direction or change the direction of the show? Um, it makes me talk out loud about the show. It's sort of a, a final commentary for me. It's, you know, the... The show is put to bed when I do the podcast, and then it's on the air. So the podcast is a way of sort of reassessing the flaws and the, the victories of each individual episode, gauging what I thought worked and what I didn't, what didn't. And I do it before I get response back to the audience. You know, so it's not like I go into the podcast knowing that this is the one they all loved or this is the one they all hated. It's more of okay, this is where I think it falls in the in the spectrum of, of good and bad on the show. And it, you know, it, it, it influences what we do only in terms of sometimes through that process of critical thinking about an episode, I'll realize I really don't like something very much or really, no, I have to admit that didn't really work. We never quite licked that. And then I'll carry that into future work of trying to remember that, that, that kind of moment. Right, right. I think, and <coughs> I've not listened to every podcast, but I know that there's one episode in particular that you were pretty critical about yourself about um, Black Market. Um, I think that was the trans or the um, your openness is you know it's refreshing because you weren't you weren't pulling any punches. Um. It, it, you know it was like once I had started you, you do so many of them now now it's like I do it every week, and it, it it would be really hard to get through a whole episode that I disliked and really tell you how great it was. You know it's like mm -hmm. it's a lot of lying. Right. <laughs> it's a lot of like PR and it's a lot of spin and it's just not in my nature. So it's it's easier to really 
you know, it's, it's easier to criticize the show. It's easier to sort of pick apart the flaws because I'm hyper aware of the flaws in the show anyway. So an entire episode doesn't work. It's like, well, what am I going to do with this? And <clears throat> I just decided instead of trying to pretend like it was all okay, might as well at least like make it useful and let's talk about why this show doesn't work. Because oftentimes you learn more from bad movies than you do from good movies and you realize ways things went wrong and you know why bad decisions are made and you know that's in some ways more valuable to sort of take forward and make good work out of. Right. I mean, it seems that I wanted to speak to you, speak, speak to you, but uh, if you weren't doing a show like this, you'd you know you'd be one of those people that you know be interested in learning more about the shows you do and going yeah. to the message boards. Yeah. And um, I just want to like, obviously, there's a large fan community, um, and you said you said you read the message boards. Um, has it ever affected you in like creating the show? Not really. I mean, I'm sure it must on sub some some subconscious level, but for the most part, you know, the show's not a democracy. Uh, I don't let it be influenced by what most fans think they like or don't like. It's really it's very egocentric on a certain level. It's about what I think. I I like this. I don't like that. This is what we're going to do. And each week we sit in rooms and we argue about what's good and what's bad. And ultimately, I decide that this is what we want to do, and then go in that direction. And then I just try to see what the fans think about that. And I'm always hoping they're going to love it. I always hope that the audience likes what we're doing each week, but they don't always. And but and when they don't, I try to, you know, if I can learn something from that and realize, well, that didn't work, and here's why, that can be a value. But if it's a show I like and they don't like it, it doesn't really change my opinion of it. It just it, it just becomes like, wow, they didn't. They didn't get get from this what I got from, and that's a shame. Yeah, because um, I've heard <coughs> that, like, you know, some sh some other shows like cater to popular opinion. You know, oh, really? Like, well, you know, like uh, one particular character doesn't you know doesn't read well with like oh yeah they do focus group and. Oh, I see. I hate that whole thing. I hate focus groups and more. You know, it's. I, I just think that's all crap. It's like you know, it's an artistic endeavor. You have to have an artist. It's their vision you're trying to present, and you can't. You know, it becomes just too ridiculous. You know, what, I mean, on Battlestar Galactica, they did a, a they did a focus group test of the miniseries before it was broadcast, and did it in two different cities, one in Texas and someplace else that I can't recall. And they got a group of people together. Some were fans of the old, some weren't. You know, the, whatever demographic they use to choose the, the the particular groups and put them in a room. And asked them what they thought of the show. Watched the whole miniseries, and then did the formal testing with the dials and all that. And they hated it. It was one of the worst testing shows they had ever seen. And the the analysis at the end was this show should never go to to series because no one will like it or watch it. And it's terrible. And fortunately, Sci-Fi had no choice but to put it on the air anyway because it was like it, it was done. It was like it was complete. And this was only like a few weeks before it was going to be on the air. And they just all sort of swallowed and crossed their fingers and put it on the air, and it was a, uh, it was very successful in the miniseries. But the focus group was completely like off the mark. Like all the characters are terrible and unlikable, and there's nobody here we can identify with. And it was like I, I knew it was crap. As soon as I read it, I was just like dismissive of it completely because I knew that that wasn't true. And it was just like, you know, those those marketing analysis meetings are all designed to get them to say that. They're, they're designed to get people to say bad things. They're not designed to really have them say positive things. It's all about get, breaking them down and making them say negative things about the product. Mm -hmm. It ended up being one of the highest rated <coughs> shows, or the highest rated yeah. show for the, that network. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I have read some, some of the message boards myself, and uh, it's unfortunate that people are actually very vicious. Oh, yeah. They're very, I mean, they're rude, actually. <laughs> it's a strange, I mean, the, the internet is really. It's interesting the behavior that you'll see on those message boards. You know how people will attack one another viciously and attack the show viciously, and it's just like this. F I don't know if it's the anonymity of it because they're all sort of hiding behind different, you know, pretend yeah, names, yeah. and who knows who they really are, and it just gives them this free license. But yeah, some of the behavior on those boards is remarkable. Yeah. Um, 